Dave Meltzer, had wrote, had wroted in his little newsletter uh, something about Dutch Mantel. Now, uh, I don't need to go through it all, and I promise you, everybody, this is going to be really the last time I mention it, because I did a video on my own. I did a video with Dutch about the situation, but I'll clue people in sort of the uh, abridged version. Dutch was very, very sick. He still is sick. His wife is sick. Uh, his daughter released a GoFundMe. It did so much better than anyone had even a right to think it would do. They were hoping for, ultimately, they were thinking five, ten thousand dollars and they'd be more than grateful. It ended up going to, just last check, just just shy of 105000 Oh, that is, that is so wonderful. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, tell me about it as well. I'm, I'm so happy. And I spoke to his daughter, Amanda, and, you know, she's over the moon. She's like, done a big list of everything that they're going to do to sort of make their lives better because it's just it's a you know a daily struggle for them uh, both at the same time that being said dave Meltzer then decided that this uh, sort of act of charity this uh, milk of human kindness then really had to be some sort of crusade of his own to uh, belittle dutch in some way with his uh, ramblings and talking about well dutch has been horrible about AEW. it's like no we've been critical not horrible Never been horrible to Tony Khan, the man. And Tony Khan, the man, who, from all intents and purposes, is a lovely, lovely guy, donated $5,000 to the GoFundMe. We've never criticised the man. We've only criticised the AW booking, as I'm sure it's the same with you. Uh, I'm sure it's the same with other podcasters as well. Now, you read it. What do you think of it all? Unfortunately, I wasn't surprised. It, it's just another example of how disconnected Dave Meltzer is from anything outside of his own bizarre little bubble. And he, Dave, I don't know what it is about Dave. Well, I take that back. I think I do to a degree. Tony, you know, Tony Khan and Dave Meltzer talk all the time. Now I'm not in the room when they talk. So, you know, I'm, I'm I guess spreading a rumor. But I've heard from so many people that are close to Tony and, and Dave that have all said the same thing. You know, Tony relies on Dave Meltzer's input way too much. Dave Meltzer has way too much influence over Tony Khan and the end product. Now, Dave isn't there producing the show or writing the show that I, that I know of, but definitely has a lot of influence. And for Dave Meltzer, that's like, finally, after all these years of trying to convince everybody that I'm a wrestling expert and I know how to produce a wrestling show and I know more about the wrestling business than anybody else because I study it. You know, you hear him talking about how he studies the business. He's just a fan like everybody else. He's an obsessive, compulsive fan, unlike most people. But there are a lot of them. There are a lot of obsessive, compulsive Dave Meltzer type fans out there. And that's where Dave's comfort zone is. But because Dave now has direct connection to Tony Khan and Tony Khan has a nationally televised you know, professional wrestling show, Dave feels validated. For the first time in his miserable fucking life, he feels validation. So that when Dutch or me or Jim Cornette or Bruce Pritchard or anybody else criticizes the product dave takes that way personally because now we're criticizing something that he has influence in or over and it's the first time in dave's miserable life that he's ever had any form of validation other than you know the group of little weirdos that follow him and and believe everything he says so i think that's why he reacts the way he does and, and says some of the stupidest things that I've ever heard anybody say, you know, talking about the television and industry and his view of the wrestling world and what works and what doesn't work. All, and, it, look, you know, a lot of us have that. You know, I, I'll do the same thing with, you know, American football. I have strong opinions about it because I like watching it, but I don't know how to play the game. I've never touched a football in a competitive environment. I've never produced a football game. I've never worked in the NFL but I've got some opinions I like to spout off every once in a while if there's somebody dumb enough to take take my word for some of the stuff I say. And that's Dave Meltzer. Somehow he's convinced himself that he's an expert of the business. Tony Khan thinks he's an expert and, and takes his direction, I guess, in a lot of ways. 
but it's failing so miserably. I, you know, well, you obviously saw last week's show because you talked about the girl shaking her tits. That was maybe the worst professional wrestling episode I have ever seen on a major television platform. That show was so horrible from the very beginning until the very end that I was, I couldn't believe what I was watching. Like, how does anybody let this happen in prime time on a major cable outlet? It, it, it really was like a bunch of 10 year old kids got together and produced a wrestling show for a high school project. That's what it looked like to me and felt like it was just embarrassingly bad. It's funny. I just listened to Meltzer's review of that show. He said it was pretty good. Wouldn't You're you believe it? Oh uh, no no it wasn't it wasn't the show's fault it was the fans' fault for being quiet. I mean, what a distorted. Up, I mean, it's a completely inverted reality. And this is the guy who studies the business, professes to know what works in wrestling and what doesn't work, that can't connect the obvious dots between a performer and the audience. It's not the audience's fault if the performer or the storylines are just not interesting. They're not going to react because you want them to. People are going to react because you've created a story and characters and moments that's playing out in front of them that evokes, it, it, it creates emotion. If the talent or the stories don't create the emotion, what are people supposed to react to? I don't know. It's just another example of just how inverted Dave's world really is. You used to talk to him, though, didn't you? Uh, I don't know if you ever liked the guy or, you know, were friends with him, but I believe you used to talk to him in the WCW days. Uh, Has he changed over the years as far as you're concerned? No, he's exactly the same. Let me tell you a little story about that. There was a guy by the name of Zane Breslov. Mm Mm-hmm. Worked for WCW. Zane had previously worked. He was a promoter. He was an independent promoter, but WWE would use him if they were going to different markets where Zane was very, because Zane also produced rock and roll. You know, if the Stones were coming to town, Zane and his company, along with perhaps another company, would handle the promotion in that local market. So Zane had very uh, deep relationships with local media and potential advertisers and sponsors. That's what Zane did. Zayn left WWE, came to work for WCW, and Zayn and I became pretty good friends. Very different people, obviously, but there was a lot of things I really enjoyed about Zayn. And Zayn was friends with Dave Meltzer. So after a while, Zayn was kind of chipping away because he knew how I felt about Dave Meltzer. I felt the same way then as I do today. And Zayn said, man, you just got to give him a chance. Just, you know, I know he says some stupid shit and... I know he's wrong about a lot of stuff, but he's really a good guy. You should really get to know him. So I thought, all right, I don't want to be so close-minded that I refuse to talk to anybody. Just because I don't like him doesn't mean that they don't have some value. So I thought, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And I started having somewhat regular conversations, maybe once a week or once every two weeks for 15 minutes, right? And my hope, my intention was that if I gave Dave Meltzer access to me, then perhaps rather than just writing stupid shit that he heard through the grapevine, so to speak, that he would feel like he had access. He could call me directly and ask whatever questions he wanted to ask or get whatever information that he felt that he he wanted to write about, at least get an opinion from someone other than whoever his sources were. Didn't work. He had access to me. He could have asked questions. He could have confirmed stories. He could have confirmed rumors. He he could have at least tried because other people like Mike Johnson from the PW Insider, Dave Shear, PW Insider, Wade Keller, um, and there's been others that write about wrestling that even back then would say, hey, I'm writing a story. We heard this is going on. Don't know for sure or not. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Or do you want to deny it? they would at least make an attempt. And Dave would never do that. Dave didn't want confirmation. He didn't want to double source a story. He just wanted to write his stupid shit, as long as it felt it fell into his narrative. Dave has a very, you know, he, he, he hates WWE no matter what he says, because they won't give him the time of day. 
despite the fact that he tries to convince people he's got access, uh, he doesn't. And when he does make a connection inside of WWE, I know this for a fact, they feed him some of the dumbest shit and he runs with it. And they do it because every time they feed him stupid shit, he runs with it. Within a matter of days, it makes Dave look like a complete idiot. He sets himself up because he doesn't double check stories. He just goes with one source. You know, and you know every- the Batlash is going to be at the Tokyo Dome next year. I heard, I read that. What a dumb shit. Yeah. So for a guy that's got access to WWE, he runs with a stupid rumor that obviously was false. But WWE does that, and they do it to entertain themselves. I used to do it. Now, I wouldn't feed Dave information, but I would have other people feed Dave information that I knew he would run with because it would make him look dumber than he already did. And he's still doing it to this day. Oh, dearie me. Um, <clears throat> I've I actually written here, do you think Meltzer takes every AEW criticism as a personal attack? I think, I think for the most part, people would agree with that. Uh, do you think he... Do you think his blind approach to being positive to whatever AEW does or, you know, adding superlatives, oh, it was a good match in AEW, oh, it was a great match, you know, always sort of bumping it up a couple of stars, you know, in uh, his own parlance, does that hurt AEW ultimately? That's a really good question, brother. And I, I pointed this out a couple of weeks ago. What Tony Khan doesn't know, because Tony's not, Tony lives in his own world. He, he lives in a bubble that, is different than everybody else's, let's put it that way. He's disconnected from the vast majority of the wrestling audience, and but he doesn't care. He doesn't recognize it. And Dave Meltzer is much the same way. But here's what happens. The more Dave Meltzer tries to defend, to spin, to add superlatives, as you say, to some of the things that are going on, to try to give people the impression that the product is actually better than it is. The harder Dave tries to defend AEW, the more your average person is looking at AEW and they're listening to Meltzer's shit. It's like, dude, you're flat out wrong. This shit sucks. I don't care what you say. It sucks. And Dave is, Meltzer is so active in promoting AEW that he's actually hurting the product. People visceral reaction to some of the stupid shit that Dave says and does is actually becoming a reflection of AEW because he's so connected to that brand. If I was Tony Khan and I was friends with Dave, I would say, Dave, please just shut the fuck up. Don't write about me. Don't talk about me. Just talk about everything else, but leave me out of your shit because you're actually hurting my brand. He is a de facto surrogate. Uh, or representative of AEW, and he does such a horrible job at it that he's actually inflicting damage on the brand itself and the product. 